Nice to see you. I'm Khatanjok Pai and you're watching my YouTube channel School of Advanced Chemistry. Today I'm going to discuss Cambridge O-Level Chemistry Paper 1, Multiple Choice Question, October, November 2022, 1-1 one, one variant. Let's get started. Question number 1. Which row shows the most appropriate, the most appropriate apparatus for the measurement given? Here are two columns. Number 1 column is for that is showing quantity and the next one is showing apparatus. 25 centimeter cube of solution that is going to be measured by by measuring cylinder. 32.7 centimeter cube of solution with the help of pipette. 75 centimeter cube gas with the help of gas range. 80 centimeter cube of solution with the help of burette. First of all, Pipette cannot measure more than 25 centimeter cube solution. I mean the maximum capacity of the pipette is 25. And so in this case we cannot measure 32.7 centimeter cube solution with the help of pipette. And the next thing is the traditional pipette is not able to measure the volume and fraction. So B is incorrect option. The second, uh, the last option, D option, this one. Buret basically uh, runs from 0 to 50 centimeter cube. I mean the maximum solution that can be hold by a buret is 50 centimeter cube. So we cannot measure 80 centimeter cube precisely, accurately, appropriately. Now the two options are left, A options or C option. 25 centimeter cube solution with the help of measuring cylinder. Cylinder is not a very much most appropriate apparatus. And the, uh, with respect to the measuring cylinder, gas range is more appropriate, the most appropriate. And normally gas range can measure 100 centimeter cube gas with the help of a normal gas range. So C is the correct option. The most appropriate option is the gas range uh, rather than the measuring cylinder. And yes, it can it can measure 75 centimeter cube gas. So C is the correct option. Question number two. A liquid X is distilled from the mixture using the apparatus shown. Here is the mixture and we are going to distill off a liquid sample X. And this whole apparatus is said to be simple distillation. Apparatus for the simple distillation. During this distillation, thermometer reads 157 degrees Celsius or degree centigrade to 160 degrees centigrade. Which information about the liquid X is correct? The liquid in X may or may not be miscible. Yes, it's possible. The liquid, if this uh, liquid X is the mixture of the more or more than two liquids, you can say, as the thermometer reads from 157 degrees Celsius to 160 degrees Celsius, so I mean it's a mixture. And it may have miscible or immiscible. Both type of liquid uh, may be present in this mixture. So A is the correct option. However, let me check the other options. X is a mixture that can be separated by distillation. No, it cannot further separated by distillation because we are already making the distillation. So it's wrong. X must contain two liquids with the boiling point of 157. Uh, degree Celsius and 160 degrees Celsius uh, no because some of the liquid is uh, yet left behind in this speaker so there may be the three liquid four liquid and so on so uh, again C is incorrect option dx must have been obtained by the fraction distillation of the petroleum petroleum is basically the mixture of hydrocarbon so liquid X may be the mixture of hydrocarbon or may not be the mixture of hydrocarbon. Uh, it's not necessary that the X is having hydrocarbon. So once again, 
this option is that's once again incorrect must not have been and so on a is the it is confirmed that a is the correct option question number three an aqua solution contains a salt y addition of an aqua solution x results in precipitate being formed that redissolve when x when more x is added could solution x and salt y be number one aqueous solution contains a salt y so uh, what are the op different options in salt y silver nitrate barium nitrate copper sulfate and zinc sulfate two nitrates and two sulfates are the possible y salt solution addition of solution x result the precipitate when hcl is added into the AgNO3 solution. Here is the formation of AgCl. White precipitates are formed. Yes, it is true. But in excess, uh, the statement is saying precipitate is going to redissolve. Re but AgCl does not redissolve. It does not redissolve. Come toward the second option when H2SO4 is added into the barium nitrate, then sulfate ion and barium 2 positive ion meet together to make barium sulfate a famous white insoluble compound. But again, if you are going to add excess H2SO4, again it doesn't re dissolve. So again, it is incorrect. When sodium hydroxide is added into the copper sulfate, then there is the formation of white precipitate of Cu. Sorry, blue precipitate so uh, pale blue precipitate will be formed CuOH twice. Pale blue precipitate will be formed. And if you are adding excess NOH, again it doesn't redissolve. So the last option is the remaining option and it will be the correct option. When NOH is added into the zinc sulfate, there is the formation of white precipitate of zinc hydroxide. When we add more NOH into the sample of zinc sulfate, aqua zinc sulfate, then yes, precipitate redissolve. So D is the correct option. D is the correct option. Question number four, which gas diffuses fastest at the same pressure? Fastest diffusion means the fastest rate of diffusion. Fastest rate of diffusion basically depends upon the high temperature, high temperature or higher temperature and the smallest mass. Here are two basically options as far as the uh, two, I mean different gases are over here. One is nitrogen, other one is oxygen. So the MR relative molecular mass of N2 is equal to 28 and relative molecular mass of oxygen is equal to 32. So nitrogen will give the fastest rate of diffusion and temperature should be higher. So B is the correct option. B is the correct option. Question number 5, the diagram shows the outer shell electron of the two elements Q and R. Uh, this is the Q, this is the R. Uh, here is the key, I mean this cross is showing an electron. So Q is having only two electron in its outer shell. Q outer shell is having only two electron. So uh, it may be, it may belongs to the group 2 element it may belongs to group 2 element or it may be lead, it may be transition element as well. Come towards the R, this R is having 7 outermost electrons. So it means that it belongs to group number 7. It may be, I mean, fluorine, chlorine and etc. Here is the nucleus, this is the representation of the nucleus. The sulfate of Q is insoluble. If the sulfate of the Q is insoluble, then it may be calcium sulfate from group 2. First of all, I am going to choose it. 
and uh, then it may be the strontium sulfate uh, it may be the barium sulfate even though it may be the lead sulfate pbso4 even though i mean this lead is not belonging to the group 2 element the next thing is element r is the gaseous at room temperature if it is gaseous then it may be fluorine gas it may be the chlorine gas which row could be correct proton number of the q either it is 12 or it is it may be the 56 and relative atomic mass of r either it may be 35.5 or it may be the 80 so from the periodic table with the help of data booklet i mean you can see uh, basically the proton number of this 12 is basically is, is belong to magnesium so there is no any sort of possibility of the magnesium because magnesium sulfate is aqueous it's water soluble so it, that is incorrect option now come towards 56 the 56 uh, is the atomic number or the proton number of barium so yes it may be the barium sulfate it could be so either c or d may be the correct option now come towards the ar of r the ar of f is equal to 19 i think and uh, the ar of cl is equal to 35.5 so the d last one d is the correct option according to the given statement so question number five d is the correct option question number six which statement about iodine atoms and iodine ions is correct iodine atom that is having 53 protons and its mass is 127 iodine ion is also having 53 protons and its mass is i mean again you can write 127 they both are having same number of protons 53 53 they both are having same atomic mass 127 I mean uh, 127 they both are having same number of neutrons 127 minus 53 127 minus 53 and number of electrons are not similar this simple iodine atom is having same I mean 53 number of electrons but number of electron in iodide ion is equal to one more electron that is equal to 54 now come towards the option they are both isotope of iodine no as they are having the same masses same number of proton yes but they are having the same masses so they cannot be the isotope of iodine they undergo the same chemical reaction once the first one is incorrect the this one is also incorrect no the reason is one is having more electron than the other if the number of electrons are not equal if the number of electron in the last shell especially if the number of electron in the last shell are not equals then chemical reaction will be different they have same number of proton yes they are having same number of protons so c is the correct option once again let me check the next option uh, they have same physical properties no one is ion other one is atom so incorrect c is the correct option question number seven the element chlorine has two isotopes 35 and 37 these are the two isotopes one is the lighter isotope and this is the heavier isotope in the product table chlorine is shown as 35.5 uh, the mass of Cl is taken average 35.5 which row shows the correct percentage of the each isotope in the sample naturally occurring chlorine basically I think as far as uh, my opinion is concerned you should learn it or you should be uh, f familiar with the mass and their percentage the Cl that is the lighter isotope Cl35 is having more percentage 75 percent in this universe natural abundance natural percentage the higher isotope i mean cl37 is having 25 percent abundance 
Simply speaking, we can also write 3 ratio 1. 3 ratio 1 or 1 ratio 3. So, what is the percentage CL? Lighter is 75% and heavier is 25. So, D is the correct option. D is the correct option. Question number 8. What is nucleon number of isotope of uranium? 235-92. The larger number is basically the nucleon number. It is also said to be atomic mass. And the similarly, it is known as, it is also said to be nucleon number. Nucleon number. The smaller number is said to be Z, I mean it is atomic number or it is proton number. Atomic number or proton number. So, C is the correct option. Question number 9. Silicon dioxide has a joint structure. Each silicon atom is joined to the four oxygen atom by the covalent bonds. Part of the structure is shown over here. Which property would silicon dioxide be expected to have? A option. A good conductor of electricity? No. Because all electron of the silicon have been used in the bonding, all outermost electron have been used in the bonding, none of the electron is delocalized or free, so the first option is incorrect. B option. A high melting point. Yes, it is true. As it is having the giant structure, then obviously it will be having high melting point and high boiling point. So B is correct option. B is the correct option. No need to check the other option. B is confirmed correct option. Question number 10. Element X and Y react to form compound XY. XY. 1 ratio 1 as the mole ratio in the formula. I mean mole of the atom of X and Y. Element Y has more electron in outer shell than element X. It means that it's uh, having or it belongs to higher group number. Higher group number. And this element X may have the lower group number. I mean it may be the group number 1, group number uh, 2, Three, etc., and so on. The next one thing is compound XY conduct electricity in the molten state. This is the indication, the huge indication about the nature of bonding. If a compound is going to conduct electricity in molten state, then most probably it's an ionic compound. Which will correctly state electron change that occurs during the reaction and the type of bonding. In compound XY. So the bonding, nature of the bonding is ionic. So B and C are incorrect option. In ionic bonding, basically there is exchange of electron from one atom to the other atom. And lower group number elements loses electron. High group number element gains electron. So X will lose, X will donate. Yes, X will donate electron to the Y. So, A, first option, A option is the correct option. Question number 11, which compound has the most single bonds in one molecule? Basically, we can write the displayed formula of each and every compound, each and every option. So, this is C2H6. This is C2H6. Its formula is this one. CH3, CH2, OH. Its formula, I'm going to write it over here. CH3, C double bond, O, O, H. Its formula, that is an alkene. You can see that CH, CH2 is the indication of carbon carbon double bond between them. So, CH3. CH double bond CH2. This is the correct displayed formula of this propane. Now let me count the total bonds, single bond. I mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
it's having seven single bond in this case one two three four five six seven eight eight single bond in this case one two I mean not this one this is a double bond this is three one two three four five six so six bonds I mean options are over here and in this case one two not this one 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, again 7 over here. So the highest number goes to option B. B is the correct option. Question number 12. The formula of ammonium metavandate is NH4VO3. It consists of ammonium ion and vandate ion. Basically, we know that ammonium ion is having one positive charge. That is this one. And if it is having one positive charge, then definitely there are the two portion of this molecule. If it is having one positive charge, uh, then there must be the one negative charge. Uh, let me write it like that. One positive charge. So it should be having uh, one negative charge. So VO3 meta vanadate ion that is having one negative charge it is having one positive charge so ammonium ion what are the charge on these ion ammonium ion one positive or i mean positive one and vo3 ion is one negative so a is the correct option question number 13 which mass of oxygen combined with exactly 16 grams sulfur to form sulfur dioxide in this question we are having the formula to get the information to solve the question so both information or all type of information can be collected from this formula from this formula i mean again once again he is asking the mass of oxygen that combines with 16 gram of sulfur so from this formula what is the mass of oxygen here is o2 what is the mass of sulfur on in this formula i mean we can write just sso2 so I'm writing oxygen on the right hand side as I'm supposed to find the answer of oxygen's mass. So anything that is required, it should be kept on the right hand side. Given information should be kept on the left hand side. Sulfur mass is given. From this formula, we can write S that is equal to O2. The mass of oxygen is equal to 16 into 2 that is equal to 32. The AR of sulfur from the product table is also equal to 32. So basically from this ratio you can see that they are having one ratio 1. One ratio 1 or I mean their masses are equal. So if you are using 16 gram of sulfur then definitely the mass of oxygen will also be 16 gram. So C is the correct option. Question number 14. The atomic number of ruthenium is 44. One of the oxide of the ruthenium is black solid X that is having mass 5.79 gram. 5.79 gram of X contain 1.39 gram of oxygen. What is the empirical formula of X? Uh, so uh, basically we are supposed to make the empirical formula. So to find the, to find the empirical formula we need the percentage or we need the reacting masses. Total mass of the oxide is this one. And mass of oxygen is 1.39. What is the mass of ruthenium? I mean the mass of ruthenium is equal to 5.79 minus 1.39. That is equal to 4.40. This is the mass of ruthenium in the solid X. And the mass of oxygen that is already given it is 1.39. So I'm going to make empirical formula ruthenium versus oxygen is 4.40 that is equal to 1.39. The next step is divide by this value by AR. AR of ruthenium I mean this is the atomic number this is not the AR and AR of the ruthenium is 101. 101 and mass of oxygen is equal to 16 mass of 
oxygen is equal to 60. So uh, we can find their simplest ratio. So 4.40 divided by 101. And the answer is 0 0.0435. So the answer is 0 0.0435. What is the answer of oxygen? 1.39 divided by 16 and the answer is 0 .0 0 0.0868 0 0.0868 So divided by the smaller value on both sides 0 0.035 0 0.0 435, I mean 0 0.0435, 0 0.0435, that is equal to 1 and that is equal to 2. So R, U, O, 2. C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number 15. 250 centimeter cube of 1 mole per dm cube HCl direct with an excess of solid sodium carbonate. The equation is shown over here. 2 mole of HCl. 1 mole of sodium carbonate going to make 2 mole of NaCl, 1 mole of CO2, 1 mole of H2O. What is the volume of carbon dioxide produced when measured at room temperature and pressure? You know, uh, at room temperature and pressure, the 24 dm cube, it means that we can write this formula, we can apply this formula. 24 dm cube is equal to 1 mole, it is equal to 1 mole of a gas, 24 dm cube. Now let me check it over here. Uh, what are the moles according to this equation? 250 centimeter cube of 1 mole per dm cube HCl with excess of solid sodium carbonate. I am going to make calculate basically the moles from uh, this given data. How to find the mole of HCl? I mean 250 multiplied by 1 divided by 1000 because the volume is in centimeter cube. So I'm going to divide by a thousand. So that is equal to one by four. So mole of HCl is equal to one by four or zero point two five moles are there. What will be the mole of CO2 according to this equation? Two mole of HCl is equal to one mole of CO2. I mean half moles. Two mole of HCl is going, going to make one mole of CO2. So zero point two five mole will be equal to 0 0.125 mole of CO2. So I can change mole into volume and 1 mole is equal to 24 dm cube. 0 0.125 multiplied by 24. 0 0.125 0 0.125 multiplied by 24 dm cube. And the answer is equal to 3. Its answer is equal to 3. So A is the correct option. Question number 16. When excess aqueous barium chloride is added to 25 centimeter cube of 1 mole per dm cube sodium sulfate, a white precipitate of the barium sulfate is formed. The precipitate is filtered off, washed, dried and weighed. 5.36 gram of barium sulfate is obtained. What is the percentage yield of barium sulfate. Basically the formula of percentage yield is equal to percentage yield that is equal to I mean experimental yield divided by calculated yield multiplied by 100. This answer is basically experimental yield. So I am going to calculate the expected yield or calculated yield. From this data, sodium sulfate, we can once again find the moles. 25 into 1 and divide by 1000. So that is equal to, I mean 140, 140 mole, 140 moles of sodium sulfate are going to be used. Same mole of barium sulfate will be found. There is a ratio of 1 ratio 1 between sodium sulfate and barium sulfate. So 1 over 40 mole of barium sulfate will be formed. How to change mole into mass? The formula is mole is equal to mass over MR. 
MR is given over here. Mole we have calculated 1 over 40. So 1 over 40 into 233 that is equal to mass. That is the mass of barium sulfate. It's a maximum barium sulfate that can be made. So what is the answer? 33 divided by 40. 5.825. 5.825. .825. So what is the percentage yield? That is uh, 5.36 divided by 5.825 multiplied by 100. And here is the percentage yield. 5.36, 5.36 divided by 5.825 and the multiply by 100. And the answer is 92%, 92%. So C is the correct option. Question number 17. Let me raise some previous portion. Question number 17. Aqueous copper 2 sulfate is electrolyzed using inert electrodes. Which statement is correct? I mean, we are having copper 2 positive ion aqueous solution. We are having SO4 2 negative ion aqueous solution. And we are having a positive ion in aqueous solution. And OH negative ion from water in aqua solution in that container. Number one, copper is collected at anode. Here is a competition between the copper 2 positive ion and H positive ion. As they are positive ion, they will move towards cathode, not towards anode. At cathode, copper ion is the winner ion. So the equation is Cu2 positive plus 2 electron goes to Cu solid pinkish brown solid will appear at cathode. In this compartment, in the uh, competition between the negative ions, the winner will be OH negative ion and 4 OH negative ion will move towards uh, anode. It is moving towards anode as it is going to lose the electron. Oxidation occurs at anode. Reduction occurs at cathode. So uh, 4 mole of electron, 2 mole of H2O and uh, 1 mole of oxygen. So let me check the further options. Copper is collected at anode? No. Hydrogen is collected at cathode? Uh, no. Oxygen is collected at anode? Yes. Sulfur? No. So C option, question number 17, C option is the correct option. Question number 18. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride is electrolyzed using inert electrode, which equation shows a reaction that occurs at anode. Once again, the solution is having sodium ion, sodium 1 positive ion, I mean, and Cl negative ions in high concentration, in high magnitude, you can say, H positive ion and OH negative ion. In this case, in this contest, basically Cl negative ion is going to be, to be the winner ion. I mean Cl negative ion, 2 mole of Cl negative ion will move to lose 2 mole of electron plus first they will make 2 mole of Cl atom and collectively they will meet together to make Cl2 gas. What is happening at cathode? Uh, he is not asking about the cathode so leave it. I mean the equation will be this one and uh, the product will be chlorine. So what is the equation happening over here that is a a option a is the correct option this equation can also be written as 2 cl negative ion minus 2 electron that is also the loss of electron goes to cl2 this is also the correct version of this equation however this a is the correct option question number 19 which pair of Equations correctly represent the reaction taking place at anode and cathode during electrolysis of the molten silver bromide. 
in case of molten silver bromide agbr if it is molten liquid i mean it is having ag positive ion mobile ion and br negative liquid ion or mobile ion i mean so ag positive ion liquid i mean molten br negative ion liquid molten so ag will move towards cathode as it is having positive charge cathode is the negative in electrolysis so ag positive will gain one mole of electron to make ag what about br br is going to make i mean br negative ion two br negative ion will go and lose two mole of electrons and br2 will be formed that is the gaseous one so ag liquid silver or uh, solid form that is in case of molten it may be in form of liquid and br2 will be the gaseous one now come towards add cathode silver add cathode silver the correct equation for the silver is this one this one because silver is not having two positive charge it is always bearing one positive one positive one positive one electron one electron so either b or c may be the correct options now come to the second equation whenever the halogen is supposed to lose the electron so this is the typical equation so you should uh, i mean we are having the answer c you should be aware about this pattern about this nature of the reaction so once again c is the correct option question number 20 the last one question of this session which two processes are both endothermic combustion no combustion is always exothermic cracking is endothermic combustion exothermic cracking endothermic photosynthesis endothermic respiration exothermic so c is the correct option option c is the correct option thank you very much have a nice day